entirety without having people be in one of those way like they were yesterday. Just for a recap, the board has basically two parts to it, uh, the left and the right. <laughs> and I'm just going to be primarily showing you how to operate the, right, the left hand side of the board just for the time being. And this will be the side of the board that you'll be using when we start doing the new shows that the people in your class have been working on. Uh, on the, top, on the uh, top section of our board, we have six monitors. One, two, three. The first three monitors allow us to be able to view what the camera ha our studio cameras have and while, while we're doing the program. The fourth monitor is our film chain monitor, which allows us to constantly view what our film chain is displaying for us, whether it's our 35 millimeter slide projector or our 16 millimeter film. Our preview monitor and then our line monitor. And once again, our program monitor or line monitor is a monitor which is showing us what we have going over the air or to our recorder. And the preview monitor is a monitor that we use so that we can view a special effect that we may be trying to set up before we air it. And that monitor, the preview monitor, is in color. So if we do try to set up a special effect and we do need to see our colors, we do have it before we program it. And then our monitor to the left-hand side naturally is, is the display monitor, monitor for our character generator. Now taking a closer look on our board, we have five banks that we can be work or that we can we do work with. The bottom bank is our program bank or bus, which will be controlling which source we have go over the air. The next bank up is our preview bus, and this allows us to preview any particular video source we may want to preview at any given time. The top two banks, which are the banks with the black buttons, these two banks right here are what we use to select what we want to special effect. Okay, And the top bank, which is our passive switcher bank, allows us to feed extra video sources into the board, and we can select which one of those sources we may have. And if you could possibly read it, and we have the camera in focus, we can feed two VTRs into the board, a DMOD. Now, a DMOD is a, re a television receiver that we have in the rack with our transmitter. And if we want to have some kind of a feed from a regular broadcast, we can feed that broadcast feed into our board. And then our three auxiliary switches. These auxiliary switches allow us to have uh, four, five, or even six cameras in the studio. What I'll do is after the program, I'll show you exactly where, the, where we can plug our extra cameras into uh, that relate to auxiliary one, two, and three. Okay, getting to the bottom part of the board, get the fader bars out of the way for you. This bottom bus right here has six, seven buttons. Button one is for camera one, two is for camera two, three is for camera three, four is for the film chain, five is for our character generator, and six is going to be whatever we have selected up on our passive switcher bank. And then the seventh button, SE, is going to be our special effects button. Now, the only bank that's going to be controlling the source that goes over the air is going to be our program bus. If you want to see it, if you want to air a particular camera or some kind of a video display, all you have to do is just push the button corresponding to the video source you're going to want to see. This changing from one camera source to another by pushing the button is giving us an, inst a spun an instantaneous change on the air. And this is what we call a cut or a take. The preview bus, the same thing, you just push the button for the source that you're going to want to preview. Now, all, for all intents and purposes right now, camera three is going to be aired. And what I want to do is focus on our preview just for a moment, please. Okay, good, right there. As you can see, we're programming three. Now, what I want to do is I want to have, as called for by the script, a dissolve from one camera to another. Anything, any kind of video change other than a cut or a take is going to be a special effect, which means you have to work with your special effect button on the preview bank and then work with your two uh, special effects banks just above it. Now, what I want to do is I want to super 
my film chain camera, and my character generator source. So what I have to do is, working with the two left-hand fader bars, you can tell that the fader bars are in like a gray block right here. And this gray block extends up to a, a black button, which says dissolve over. When you want to super or dissolve two sources together or dissolve from one source to another, you have to push the dissolve button in. Now, as I move my, fa okay, push the, 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 the dissolve button in. On the bottom bank of our special effect banks, we push for our camera, button four, because it's our film chain. And on our top bank, I'm going to push character generator. And then I can move my two fader bars together. And if our camera can get on our preview monitor for a moment, please. You can now see that we're gradually going from our character generator onto our film chain camera. This is done simply by selecting our camera for our button four for our film chain and our button five for our character generator and then just move these two fader bars up and then down. Now, the thing you have to watch for is when you want to do a special effect, you're going to have to cut to the special effect bank, which means you're going to have to push the seventh button for SE for special effects. Now, right now, we're on camera three. And the script's going to call for a dissolve from camera three to our character generator. On our, we push the SE on our preview bank for special effects so we can preview our special effect. And as you can tell in our, on our special effects bank right now, we have our film chain camera. Because the fader bars are down, we're going to be working on bus B. So on bus B, we're going to have to push the button of the camera that we have programmed at this given time. On the unactivated special effects bus, unactivated special effects bus, we're going to have to push the button for the video source that we're going to want to dissolve to, <coughs> and then we, which is going to be character generator. So we push button five for character generator. And then, while still on our preview monitor, we can now take our fader bars, and we can dissolve from camera three to our character generator. It's kind of hard to see right now because our, car our camera three isn't giving us a video display. Just for a visual effect, let's make pretend that uh, we're getting our color bars from our camera three. So what we'd have to do is then we can then preview to make sure it's going to do what we want it to do before we put it over the air. And then we can push the SC to program it. But remember that on your, when your fader bars are down, you're working on bus B, push the source that you have up on the air already, and then on the un unactivated special effect, effects bank, you can push the source you're going to want to go to. Then, once you know that your effect is set up properly, push the SE for special effects. Now what we're going to be doing is activating our special effect buses and our special effect fader bars. And then when the director says dissolve, then all we have to do is just dissolve. The thing you have to be careful of is that when you go to your special effects, your, the video source that's going to be coming up is going to be the exact same one that you have over the air. So when you cut to the special effects, the people at home aren't going to see any kind of a, uh, a mistaking of going from one video source to another quickly for a quick change. And this is the portion that you'll be working with. Okay, if you have any questions, what I'll do is I'll answer them out.